keep that big vision. Keep a, a, a big picture view of your business and surround yourself with other people who can see you. Nothing is more critical than you work with clients who receive the full value that you have. And especially if they can even draw out the next level of value that you aren't even aware of yet. Those are really right-sized clients for you. Hey there, it's Samantha Hartley of the Profitable Joyful Consulting Podcast. This season, we have been talking about gifts and talents, skills and expertise. And today I wanted to specifically talk about the importance of staying big and being big, even when those around you are small. So years ago, we had a friend who would tell the story of Gulliver and from Gulliver's Travels as a really cool analogy. So I wanted to share that with you today. Uh, Gulliver was um, a man who went out on a sailing adventure in the book by Jonathan Swift. Uh, and he goes out, he sets sail on uh, these adventures. And um, in one case, he ended up on this uh, island, the land of Lilliput. Um, in the land of the Lilliputians. And while Gulliver is a normal size guy, the Lilliputians are very small. So they're like, you know, maybe three inches high. And he crashes uh, and falls asleep on the beach. And when he wakes up in the morning, he's tied down by all of these ropes that are holding him down to the ground. And he's surrounded by Lilliputians who are walking around him and walking on him. And they're all kind of postulating about what they see. Uh, and the important thing is that none of them can really see him because they're so small and he's so big, like they can only ever see a small part of him uh, and they never get the full picture of him as this uh, whole huge person. Uh, and our friend used that analogy to refer to when people around us can't see the fullness of who we are. They can only see kind of the a, a small part. And if you're surrounded by people who only see a small part of you, then you begin to get like this impression of yourself as like, smaller than you are. And I find that my clients will encounter that very often, especially when they're outgrowing people around them, when they're evolving past them. And you may find in your business growth that you evolve past people in your personal life. You may evolve past clients that you've worked with. Uh, we have to really struggle with this sometimes with family members who remember us a certain way and we're like, I'm not that person anymore. So uh, it is I, it, this is something that I want you to be aware of. And we've been talking about so many things with uh, expertise and your gifts this season. I think this is a really important one to continue to check in with. You are going to grow and evolve as you work in your business. Your business is going to grow specifically. And then you as a person are going to grow. We've talked a lot about how those things are correlated. Like you, you're, you can top out at your own personal growth, and you'll find your business growth will hit up against that. A lot of times, a CEO of a startup will get the business grown to a certain point and then either pull in a co-CEO or like step aside because she realizes that what is needed to get the business from uh, to the next level isn't what got her there. And it's a really a, a kind of a new skill set. So in your own business, as you're growing and evolving, you are going to bump up against this concept. And I, I just want you to be aware of it. It's happening with uh, one of my clients right now who is raising prices on past clients. Now, you probably know that it's much easier to raise clients on uh, and, you know, you raise your prices and then you have a new client and you're like, here's the price. Then it is to go back to people who have known you for a while and been working with you for a while, say three years, and then raise the price. So that's a whole other episode on how we go about doing that. But uh, that is the situation. So when my client went to uh, raise prices on some of these clients, you know, the concern was that, um, is she getting too big for her britches or like, who does she think she is and things like that. And what I have said is it's important that you work with clients who see the fullness of you. They need to see you as the tall Gulliver. If they're only seeing a portion of you and they're only receiving a portion of that value, then they're not going to value the new price. The client can only receive as much value as they're able to receive. Right. Uh, Another example, I had a client who worked with very large companies, uh, well, had been working with very small companies, and they weren't really getting the whole value from her work. And I said, you need to be working with larger companies because like, 
the clients that you're working with right now are like a Honda who can't get out of third gear. And you're like working with these like Ferrari level clients or need to be who can like really, really take your work and implement it fully. So that's a, an argument for like watching the size of the clients that you're working with. But your value, that that is going to come across that way. It's going to come across as like they can't receive that much value if they, and that's about them. And so you need to work with clients who can receive your full value. And when you do, they're going to see your full value. And value is, is associated with price. So you'll be, your services will be too expensive. You'll be too much for clients who can't receive all your value. And that can be because the business is too small. That can be because they're too small minded. It can be just because they're no longer a fit for you anymore and where you're going with your business and where you're growing. That's what evolution and growth does is it can take us away from or past the people who we worked successfully with before. So there's really three areas that I want you to think about um, for this. Uh, the first one um the first place I want you to be big, and I know you already are, is in your vision for like, what are we building here? What do you see from your business and your mission? Like, what are you, what are you doing with this business? Uh, those vision and mission are, are um, a lot of people will use them interchangeably. To me, those are two different things. One is like, what, uh, what this thing is going to be when it becomes, and then the mission is like, why I'm doing what I do and what I feel driven and called to do. And I bet you have a big one of those, even if, in quotation marks, right, even if you just want to earn enough to be able to be self-employed and um, take care of your family, and you don't necessarily need a $2 million business, which is what some people will tell me, um, no matter what, you uh, probably feel called to make a big contribution to your clients. And you might have uh, like big ideas within yourself that you want to express. Or you might have an idea about how something can work and you want to see it done right the way you do it. So all of those are drivers which are calling you to be big, the biggest version of yourself. So in addition to that big vision and mission, it's important to make sure that you have an identity like who you are as a person and as a company, as a leader, as an expert, all of that is big. So that's the first thing that I want you to do is really connect with like, there, you are big. There's a lot of you and you will never be too much for the right clients. So connect with what are you here to do for whom you're here to do it and really go out and find your people. And if you ever get messages of like too much or like, wow, that was a lot or anything like that. Um, those are clients who are either too small for you or not ready for you right now. You need to have people showing you like, whoa, this is what we're, we're ready for this and we want more of this. Remember, I love for clients to pull your genius through you, like uh, be introducing ideas, asking you questions about things you haven't yet thought of yet and really pull that genius through. So that's the first area is like big. You are big. You're thinking of big things. You have a big mission and vision. Uh, you are a big brand. So build that and really focus on that. The second way I want you to be big, uh, your business is big. Even if it's just you, your business is big. How is it big? Well, uh, there's all these departments. So there's sales, marketing, admin, operations, finance, and then your expertise, like your core expertise. That's also, those are all aspects of the business that you already have. And there's more right? There's even more of those. There's the ones who's in charge of uh, the uh, network in the events. And then there's this other department over here. That's a big business. That's a lot. Uh, and what happens is because we're immersed in the business and immersed in like, I'm just trying to get clients right now, or I'm just trying to do this thing. All right. I'm just trying to finish this project right now, or I'm immersed in delivery and I'm so busy working with clients. Like it's important for you to zoom out and have a big picture of your business on an ongoing basis, on a regular basis, it's important to check back in and be like, okay, hold on. There's this whole thing. And if you pull in team members, even better, you can delegate parts of that business to them. And now there's team members, right? So there's a, it's, it's big. It's a lot. And it's important for you to acknowledge, like, there's a lot going on here in this business. So when you zoom out, you check back in on the vehicle, the structure that you're building which is helping you to achieve that big mission and big vision. And one of the things I think it's important for you to acknowledge is like, you can't be good at all the jobs. Like even after all these years of self-employment, I can tell you there's some of the things that have to be done in my business that I am just not good at. 
And yes, I get helpers to help me with it, but sometimes there's just stuff that I just have to do. How could you be good at all the things? Like no other big business out there is the CEO doing all the jobs, right? That's why they build up a staff. So it's important for you to realize and to recognize there's a lot of stuff going on in your business, even on its smallest, in its smallest incarnation. And you can have compassion for yourself if you're not just great at all of them. You got to be great at your expertise. Nobody expects you to be just perfect at all the other aspects, whether that's the finance part or the email marketing part or the sales part. Uh, a business is big. Even a one person business is big. Even at its very start, it's still pretty big. And a lot of us are working to simplify and simplify it over, um, over time. Like it can really complicate, believe me. And we want to keep simplifying that business. So that is an important part of what we do. And it's big. Okay. So take it easy on yourself. That also segues me into my third point that I want to make, which is you have got to surround yourself with big mirrors. It's important that you are not surrounded by Lilliputians. You have to have people around you who can see the full you, who see you big, who can at least reflect that back to you. Wow. This is the value you bring. These are all of the ways that you show up in the world. When you have those big mirrors around yourself who can reflect back to you who you are and uh, your potential, like you could be even bigger. I see you growing. I acknowledge that you are growing. You're different than you were before. Wow, you can do a lot more. All of that uh, feedback for you, those positive big mirrors help you to grow. They support your growth. They're the counterpoint to all of the small that may need to be in your life. You know, we can't get rid of all of our family members that we can't get rid of all of those, you know, old friends who we love them, but they can't really understand this part of your life. Okay. But we have to offset that by having tons of big mirrors. So this is, what does this look like? It looks like mentors who are like, I hold a big vision for you. I'm possibly holding a bigger vision for you than you hold for yourself. Cause I see your potential. I see what's possible for you. It is critical to have a peer group who isn't threatened by you, who holds a big vision, reflects back like they see you, they receive and they see you. It's, I mean, it's invaluable to have that kind of uh, support and acknowledgement uh, around you as you are growing a business. As you are going about building your business, I want you to keep these three things in mind. Keep that big vision keep a, a, a big picture view of your business and surround yourself with other people who can see you. Nothing is more critical than you work with clients who receive the full value that you have. And especially if they can even draw out the next level of value that you aren't even aware of yet. Those are really right-sized clients for you. It's okay for you to be big. The only people around you who are diminished by you being big are people who are themselves small. Don't ever let anybody take your shine away, tell you that you're too big, too much, too loud, too anything. You are here to fulfill something that you were called to earth to do. And I want you to feel the bigness of that mission, of that directive, of that gift that you have brought through into the world. And I want you to find the people who are big enough to receive it and big enough to be with you as you're delivering it. And with that, I am wishing you a profitable and joyful consulting business. Thanks for watching. I'd appreciate if you'd like this episode. And if you enjoyed the show, why not subscribe? Be sure to click the bell to get notified when new episodes drop.